This is your tech news briefing for Monday, January 9th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. The North Atlantic right whale is a docile giant. You're hearing it now in tape from NOAA Fisheries. But it's endangered. And in recent years, its numbers have plunged from an estimated 481 individuals in 2011 to 340 in 2021. One cause of this is the whales can sometimes get tangled up in fishing lines, in particular ropes that connect lobster traps to buoys floating on the ocean's surface. So conservationists want to make these traps ropeless. But to do that, they'll need new technology and buy-in from lobstermen. With me to talk about the tech behind this new gear and how it's being received is our science and climate reporter, Eric Neeler. Hi, Eric. Great to have you back on the show. Nice to be here. So let's talk about how some of these technologies work. Firstly, for lobstermen, if they don't have buoys on top of the water to locate their lobster traps, how do they find the cages? Yeah, so imagine that a lobsterman has a string of, say, 8, 10, maybe even 20 lobster traps, and they're sort of all roped together. And on the very ends of these ropes are lines that reach to the surface with two buoys floating on top. And this marks his territory, and hopefully there'll be lobsters crawling around, and they'll smell the bait and go inside and get trapped in the traps, and the lobsterman wants to bring them up. So normally he would look for his buoy. It may have a colored marking, it may have a number, it may be just a floating jug, like a plastic milk jug, or a special design that says, oh, these are my lobsters. Well, those ropes can also get tangled around the right whales that swim through the area. So the idea is to eliminate the vertical lines that are in the water. So what they've done is they've figured out a couple of neat little methods of putting a buoy on the trap below. As a lobsterman approaches, he's gonna send out an acoustic signal, which is then received by the device on the lobster trap, releases either self-inflatable buoy, some other kind of buoy, it's gonna float to the surface, and the lobsterman can then pick that up and bring in his trap line. So going from this very low tech, just kind of, you know, painted buoys that tell you where their cages, the traps are on the bottom of the ocean to very high tech, you know, a device that inflates itself and comes to the surface. Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, it's funny. These devices were built by scientific device firms that were used to supplying scientists who are studying the oceans for whether it's climate change or chemistry of the ocean. And so they have a real expertise in getting things to work underwater. And one of the big problems is you can't really send the same kind of signals as in the air, like a radio signal, right? And you can't get an internet underwater either. It's too dense. So you've got to find a different way. So they have these acoustic signaling devices they've developed for many years for scientific instruments that are now being used to help the fishermen. And so they've been testing these for a couple of years and they've been working out the bugs. And they found a couple of systems that seem to work actually quite accurately that will allow the fisherman to retrieve his lobster traps without having these vertical lines in the water. How are the people who are testing this tech, you know, the lobstermen, the boat captains, how are they finding the tech in these trials? Some of the lobstermen feel that, you know, it's not their fault that the whales are dying, that it's maybe they're beached for other reasons or they can't find their food. And so it is very difficult to pinpoint a connection between one person's rope and the death of a whale. And so there have been a lot of fighting back against it through lobbying and, and political means and so forth. On the other hand, there are also lobstermen who are looking in the future and saying, you know, this problem isn't going to go away. If they can make it simple and easy and that I won't lose too much money, then maybe we should try this. Why are these technologies something that are being tested out now? Right. Well, for the last few years, what's pushed this technological drive really is legal action. Lawsuits filed by conservation groups in the Boston area and judges' decisions saying, The federal government must protect these whales under two different federal laws, the Marine Mammal Protection Act and the Endangered Species Act. And so as a result, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, has devised these trials for this new gear. 
And so this is really what's been pushing it is these legal action and a series of deadlines to find a way to protect these whales. But what happened in December was members of Congress from Maine inserted a provision into the budget bill that would extend the deadline of any kind of action on these new rules. So we, we're a bit of a limbo right now. The deadline was going to be two years. Now it's going to be out for several years longer. And so a little bit of the impetus to get these new technologies off the ground and perfected has been taken away. I mean, apart from the uh, political questions that remain, are there difficulties getting people on board with using these technologies, other challenges that lobstermen might have to deal with if they take them on? Well, of course, cost is the big thing. These devices can cost $5,000, $10,000, up to $20,000, depending on each device. And lobstermen often have several hundred trap lines, and each one has got 10 traps on them. So the cost can go up really quickly. So cost has been one big issue, but also adoption of a new technology, something they're not used to. Many fishermen have adopted new technologies to help them find fish, to help them navigate through rough seas or see approaching weather patterns and this sort of thing. But this is really about harvesting the lobster from the water. And for some part-time fishermen, they're not willing to pay that cost and to invest the time needed to learn how to use these devices. On the other hand, there's a small but growing group of lobstermen who are dedicated to this. They're trying them out. There are several dozen along the East Coast and all the way up to Cape Cod in Maine who are breaking some new ground. They call themselves the pioneers, and they are really working to get these devices working. They're also hoping that as NOAA goes through the regulations, that they will be allowed to fish in areas that may be closed now to other sorts of gear. So one of the ways that you can protect the whales is say, well, you can't have any fishermen, any lobstering in this entire zone unless you have what's called ropeless gear. The fishermen, the lobstermen who are figuring out how to use that gear may get a little bit of an advantage over their neighbors who are reluctant to adopt the new technology. All right, that's our science reporter, Eric Nealer. Thanks for joining us, Eric. You're welcome. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.